This hour is brought to you by Jeremy Temple Law Office of Bloomington. Personal injury, criminal, business, whatever you need, Jeremy Temple Law Office will get you taken care of. Well, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Well, come on, welcome aboard Indiana Sports Beat with Corey O'Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by Rivals. Make sure you go to thehoosier.com and get signed up for an account there. Complete coverage of the Indiana Hoosiers. Todd Leary on board as always. Jake's at the wheel, keeping us on the track. Chronic Hoosier will be along today. Uh, Hopefully, uh, we may talk to Eric Gordon, possibly. We'll see if that happens or not. Tom Brady spotted in a closed park working out, man. That's what it's come to, Todd Leary. Tom Brady's trying to find some place to work out, finds a park, and then he still gets busted by somebody saying, telling him, it's closed, can't work out here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? That That's what makes news nowadays. That's that's what's crazy about Well, then they this. talked. Then it was the mayor. The whole reason we know all this is because the mayor was talking about this at a press conference. It's like this dude cannot live any kind of a normal life. <laughs> I mean, he was simply out at a park and it's like, okay, just tell him and let him go on. But no, you gotta let's have a press conference and tell him. Why didn't he about just it. run around that Derek Jeter's mansion that he's renting out down there? I mean, he, that's that's work out enough. He could run around that thing and not see anybody for twenty minutes. No doubt. I, I mean that, his that's probably as big as the park he was at. It's gigantic. Yeah. It's he could stay inside there and never have to leave. That's amazing. You're right. Why would you ever leave that thing? Why would you not? Be, you you've got more money than God. Why, why create your own workout facility? I mean, you own everything. You should own everything. It's amazing. Uh, NFL had their mock draft. Uh, I've seen different reports on how that went. Some saw the first pick was right off the bat. They're having problems, but I think they got it straightened out. Uh, we'll you see. Mean, you mean technically they had? Yeah, problems? yeah, 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 yeah. Technical glitches and whatnot. Well, you know what? I give them a little bit of credit for having a little practice run then. Not, not a yeah. Can you imagine doing that? Because you want to talk about thing? you want to talk about viewership. I mean, the the Michael Jordan thing Sunday night had a gigantic following, and I'm sure the draft will have the same thing. I mean, it'll be six million six million views. I think uh, it doubled the the biggest documentary prior to that. It was Bo. You don't know Bo. Uh, it was like three million, but for a debut, this was double six million. It shattered the records. Of course, there's nothing else to freaking watch. I mean, everybody was looking they, so forward How do to they that. come up with six million? I mean, who didn't? Uh, they'd be easier to count who didn't watch it. Yeah. It's like, what were you all doing? Seriously, I don't know anybody that didn't watch it. Yeah, it was. Uh, and I was disappointed, too, because you're in this day and age, you're so used to binge watching everything. Yeah. Like last night, I'm like. Okay, I'm ready for the next right. episode. Why is it not, yeah, why is it not on again? Let's go. Where is it? Let's go. Let's go. But thank goodness there was a, a new episode of uh, American Idol I get to watch. And American Idol is going to stay live next week. They're going to – they're doing their uh, – they're going to do – Hold up. Hey, man, you got to take whatever you can get right now. No. Nope. Yep, nope. yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you got to take whatever live entertainment you can get. Competition. No. Nope. Competition. They're going to – plus Katy Perry's on there. I love Katy Perry. Um, They'd have to have – they would have to have the models perform naked on that show before I'd watch it. <laughs> they don't have models, but yeah, but, whatever. Uh, I'm just telling man, you. I'm taking don't anything, man. any kind of competition. But uh, they're they're live. They're going to be going live next week, singing from wherever, all over the place. So got something, got something going. Maybe they should have some a team sing, a team I'm sing. I'm out. I officially draw the line. American <laughs> yeah. Idol. Yeah. Man, I'm taking whatever I can get right now. I'm going nuts. Uh, but. Let's see. Oh, World Series of Poker postponed until fall. Now, see, that's I guess one. Th- I they mean, can figure Vegas, out. A way to Vegas do may not even be open yet by the time that they normally have that in. Oh, I, think June I can't or imagine that, uh, that. That I saw a picture of the Vegas Strip. Just you know, I did too. It's looking like this, and I'm like, what? It's just nuts. Um, you would think that they would figure out a way to do the the poker virtual. Because that's hell. Everybody plays it that way half the time anyway. I mean, I know there would be some people yeah, with it's that part kind of, of money. Lure, on it's part of the lure of it, for one. And, and it's become such a big thing. I mean, it, 
Plus, I mean, timing doesn't really matter for that. I mean, they can move that thing back. It's not that big a deal. They'll need – Vegas will need, you know, they'll need conventions and need that stuff to come out there once it reopens because it's you know, it's like you said the other day. I mean, people are not all of a sudden, if they just open things back up, not just going to rush out and be in the middle of 10,000 people again. And, and, you know, Vegas, I think, will have a real gradual reopening. Tim text in, uh, says six, five guard guard. Jordan Longino says, I, you offered was sweet. He knows all about the history the state and all that. Yada, yada. Mom graduated from IU. Yep. Uh, we had, oh, I didn't know that. That's a yeah, good little that, that article was, that was in the, an article on the Hoosier.com. Uh, I did see that. I, like a I, week ago. I just didn't read the part about his mom. Yep. 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 Uh, got, so got a, got a connection there. So you got that going on. Um, Tim, well, let's that. find out who her favorite player was. Do we need to have Bailey send her a message or <laughs> Galbert or somebody? I mean, who, uh, who odds are it could, could have been Todd Leary. We know oh, that. Yeah. Uh, Let, let's let's bet odds against that one. Let's just go with Bailey or Calbert or somebody. Happens all the time. Uh, let's see, we'll have to get to Alec Leslie to, to re- dig in, do some reporting, see who was, who her favorite IU player was. Yeah, could have been. I ever, there's so many times we're out and about. Oh, Todd, you were my favorite player when we were back. I loved watching you play. Yeah, we hear but, that all the time, and and then Brian Evans walks around the corner, and they say the same thing to him. <laughs> I'm cool yeah. with it. I'm yeah. cool with it. Very and nice. That's why when he was on that time at Yogi, <laughs> you had him on for two minutes, and Keith Smart walked in. He's like, "Well, thanks a lot for joining us, Brian." We, we see well, that. I mean, nothing against Brian. I can get Brian on here <laughs> not any time, but almost any time we want. Oh, I know it was great. That was his great comedy. Great, great fun. Well, if you were a player right now, what would you be doing if you were in school? I mean, and think back to the to the mindset you had at that time, discipline and all that. What what would you be doing? Oh man, you know, I, I honestly I don't even really know. Probably playing golf, just like I am now. I mean, I started playing golf about my junior year, and believe me, I used the term playing very loosely because Matt Nover and I used to go up to Cascades Golf Course and. uh just try to play as many holes as we could. We weren't very good at all, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's really nothing. I mean, obviously we'd be doing some workouts, but it's not like, you know, today they can do zoom calls and virtual calls and you can find workouts and all that stuff. I mean, Tim Garrow would have put a workout together for us, I'm sure. But you know, there's back then there was really no way to keep track of whether you were doing it or not. I don't, I don't know what I'd have done. And now, and I don't get this. I saw a picture yesterday where they, they've taken like two by fours and yeah. screwed them together the over basket. top of the rims. What is the freaking point of that? I mean, I don't get it. You Golf courses are open, which they should be, but you can't walk up to a basketball go and shoot by yourself. And it's like, wait a minute, you put these things in place, the social distancing, let that be the deal. I mean, leave the freaking rims up. It's it's just stupid. Yeah, right? I mean, they don't want people going out there and shoot. They're, they're assuming it's not going to be one guy out there shooting with his basketball. They're assuming it's going to be 10 guys out there playing against each other in a game. And they don't want – I mean, my, my kids were playing in Carmel. All my kids were playing together with some buddies, uh, not last week but the week before, and the Carmel cops came and made them leave the court. They wouldn't let them play. And and I get it. I mean, that's that is part that's violating the rule. But then, you know, when we all go play as the four of us, I mean, I, we're not going to infect each other. So I, I just don't I, I get it. I know what you're saying. But I mean, I also understand the other side of it. Yeah, I mean, all, I'm all about staying safe, all about staying safe. It's you know, it's I, hard to you, you ask that question. I mean, what would I have done? My first reaction would have been, well, Coach Kiefer would have got me into Lawrence North and been able to play or been able to shoot at least and do stuff around there. Now? But, well, well, that that then I would say that this is a different scenario. This is different than anything we've ever dealt with. So I I don't even think that would be a possibility. I mean, we heard uh, um, who was it? We heard the uh, Luke uh, Logan Duncan talk about uh, he got into a church. He and his dad were able to get into a church somewhere, and then we, Anthony Leal talked about you know, being able to work out in, in one of a friend's, you know, gym at home. So, I mean, guys are, guys are coming up and being creative and finding different places to go work out. But yeah, it's just crazy. Tim sent me a picture on the text line of a single golf cart. You see those? <laughs> it's not really a golf cart. It's like a, a moped, a three wheel moped 
We're no, gonna, I need one. Where this is, dude, this is awesome. I, I will send this to you. It's yeah, like a, forward that on. You know, those, you know How, those you know those you know those tri- deliver it? You know those tricycle tri wheeled motorcycles that yeah. you see you nowadays? It's kind of just like that, except that the two wheels are in the back. It's like a little moped with just a seat and a and a deal holding your clubs in the back. Yeah, it, dude, Sign you can jet you around. Have it on Amazon. Do you have it on Amazon? I don't know, Tim. You'll have to send me. Where did you find that, Tim? Yeah, I need um, it. Is this is absolutely hilarious. I mean, you could you could probably play eighteen holes in about two and a half hours in this thing, maybe two hours. I'm not kidding. You, you by yourself, I promise you could maybe get eighteen holes in. Not at the in point. Two hours. Not at the point. <laughs> you will, there will be seven hundred people. You'll have to play through. There are a lot, a lot of, a lot of members out there now. There are that. And what a beautiful day it was out there yesterday to play. Man, I was out there. Uh, I'm going out today. I know you were out playing, so I'm looking forward to getting back out there today, playing a little bit, doing something, trying to get some exercise. If the sun's out and the temperature reads starts with a five or bigger, you will see me out there. Uh, Indiana, of course, the recruiting continues to, to move forward as, as they move forward and you see the guys that are coming in and, and what we've seen for the last couple of years, what changes are you expecting to see next year for offensively for the team speed? You know, I think they started last year's season out playing really fast. I mean, heck they were averaging over 90 points and I know everyone will say the competition wasn't good and that's why they scored so many points, but the Big Ten, it's always going to slow down. Like once the Big Ten starts, I don't care who, what team you're talking about. If even if Indiana averaged ninety some points a game, it's going to slow down. But it doesn't need to slow down to the point that it did. And and I think Indiana um, got away from, I, I, you know, they they got the turnovers down, which was a key. The, the real key to that is is playing faster with less turnovers. And and you know, I I, I think that they struggled to score in the half court offense enough that they really should have tried to speed the game up no matter what. You go play in certain arenas and you need Indiana needed to play faster. They were more athletic than a lot of teams. And and, the, and we've talked about this a lot. At the beginning of the season, uh, Archie talked about that's how what we were going to see tempo 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 that didn't happen. I'm not really sure why that didn't happen. I mean, I do know from a standpoint of I don't know that he had the horses that he wanted to run that, but he kind of knew what he had going into the season. So I'm not, I'm, I'm confused why he would say that and then completely abandon that. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, I, I think their lack of ability to shoot the ball and, and I know, I, I know what almost all coaches say when you say that is they downplay that primarily because they don't want to, they don't want their own players to hear them talk about the fact that they struggled to shoot the ball because confidence is such a big factor in shooting. So they want, I was even at practices where Archie Miller would say, I watched you guys shoot the ball in practice I, or in high school. I know you can all shoot the ball. And he almost just kind of glided right past it without a whole lot of conversation because he doesn't want the, and doesn't want them to get in their own heads. And, and, you know, I, I don't, I'm just going to call it because of the numbers are what they were. I mean, Indiana struggled to shoot the ball. That's that's a known fact based on numbers. That's not Todd's opinion. And when you do that, you, you know you you struggle to play faster. I mean, you you really have to get a layup or run the offense. And and when those are your two options, and a mid range jump shot or an early jump shot in the offense is not a good option. I mean, you're going to slow down. And and that's where they got to. And, and, but I mean, truly, I think the improvement of the guys who were there last year, along with the addition of everybody coming in, um, the, the the shooting numbers have to go way up. There's just I don't see any way it doesn't. Yeah, and that's something that the uh, Indiana fans are long used to, uh, and, and gotten away from that in the last couple of years. It just makes the games more fun to watch. Uh, whether they're any more competitive or not, which of course they will be, but it allows you to do so many other things and get guys involved. And it, it just, it, it's just something that, that they've been lacking so badly that it, it's, it shocked a lot of fans, I think, on how bad the shooting has gone. Well, I mean, when, when guys back in, in my era and, you know, before me and that, in the Coach Knight days, I mean, guys that came in mostly could already shoot. I mean, there would be some tweaks here and there. And then you'll have the occasional guy like Chris Reynolds, who was much more of a defender and had kind of an ugly jump shot. Um, But for the most part, everybody already could shoot. There wasn't a ton of technical stuff that needed to happen. 
in order to make guys consistent, good shooters. They kind of came in that way. And, and that is not the case with this team. Like this, this team has some technical errors. The guys who are already there, they have some technical issues with the way they shoot the ball. And until they fix those, they're never going to be consistent shooters. And I'm talking almost every guy on the team has an issue. I mean, Devante, Devante really was the only guy that had a, you know, a technically pretty good jump shot. Um, and, and I mean, I'm not trying to pick on them. I'm just telling you like they, they need, they need an actual shooting coach, uh, or shooting coordinator. Shot or doctor. So they needed a shot doctor. They need a shot doctor. And we, we're going to hit the break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to see if we can get a hold of, uh, Mr. Eric, uh, let's talk about a shot doctor. That would be nice if we can get him. But uh, if not, well, we're going to continue talking about. The needs of Indiana on the court next year, what we might see with the guys coming in. Uh, hey, Eagle Point Pub, if you're needing some food, they got takeout available, daily specials like a large one topping pizza for $10.99, uh, wings, a dozen wings for $9.99, classic tenderloin. They're open three to seven. Give them a call or, or you can get it at eaglepointpub.com. Get you some food, help them out. Hey, uh, we're back with all that and more here on the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Larry right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. You're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier, number 23, 1992. And I'm on the beat with Jim Cole. I'm standing at a front door. I can hear that dog roll play. Now I'll be so glad to see you. 
Welcome back to the Sports Team. Troy O'Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Powered by Rivals. Go to thehoosier.com. Always complete coverage. Stories there every day on recruiting and uh, coverage for the Hoosiers. Football gets kind of pushed to the back page a little bit, but, man, they've been active and busy. Uh, offers and commitments coming in. Todd, they're quietly going about business. You know, I, I think about football or, like, my daughter plays soccer, those, those fall sports. You know, my daughter's going to be a senior, and they've got the best team in school's history. I'm like, am I going to get to watch her play? I, I mean, yeah. I'm sure that they're going to get to play, but I don't know that I'm going to get to watch her play. Yeah, I mean, that that is – so crazy to even think about, but considering how far away it is, but man, I, I mean, when you turn on ESPN and you watch them talking about the college football season being in jeopardy and, you know, the fact that the NBA is still somewhat considering trying to have something in late summer kind of gives me a little bit more hope. Uh, I, I hope that they, I hope Adam Silver doesn't just all of a sudden give in and cancel that right away. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's just so when the things that are so far out there, I mean, we may look back at these statements six months from now and hopefully be like, yeah, we, we were, you know, we were thinking doomsday here, but, but it luckily didn't pan out that way. And, but we also may have all the fall stuff canceled. It's just, it's crazy. Nobody really can say. Yeah. Ryan, uh, <laughs> hit the text line. You can do the same. 812-269-6367. He said, I cut the grass yesterday and today it was snowing this morning. So uh, you talking <laughs> about chains. <laughs> That's the truth, man. It was like eight, 75, almost 80 because degrees lives yesterday. In Canada. That's it's right. Exactly. Canada. Everything north of Fort Wayne is Canada. Yeah. You got those snow geese up there, man. Yeah, you know, that- it's like the guy with the uh, that, that put the plow on the front of his truck and started driving south and stopped at a gas station. And some guy says, "Hey, what's what's that?" He said, "Well, I guess I'm home." So he put that on the first place. The first place I go, and somebody don't know what this is. That's where I'm yep. moving. Yeah, I'm, I get it. Believe me, I, I feel that same sentiment. But yeah, it's it's, uh, it's talk about change. But uh, uh, you know, I talked earlier about how sports and, and how it's going to change. It's like, man, we. Well, there's got to be some normalcy to it because, you know, sports is part of what we are as a fabric, as a society, as a people. We got to have the competition, that the release. Um, and some you can get some of that from TV, but man, the not being there and, and it changes the events when it doesn't have people at them. So uh, we've got to get back to that, hopefully, sooner rather than later. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it, it tells you you know, what a big part of your life it is and, and, you know, what a big part of your entertainment life, especially. And so, you know, it, it, it's just, uh, I, I think that once, once some of that stuff starts to get, once they start opening things back up, which they've already talked about, you know, potentially doing here in the next couple of weeks for sure. It, it, I think once that starts happening, we'll start to see how, you know, how it's going to affect things. And, and that's when we'll really know whether they're going to be able to have some late summer activity. I mean, if they are able to have the the PGA events in the beginning of June, like they're talking about, I, I think that'll kind of give us a real indication as to whether they're going to be able to open them back up in late, late summer. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but just yeah. getting out ourselves and, but just getting back to some normalcy, I mean, whether it's, Going to a press conference, which those are not the funnest things in the world to do. But right now, it's like, hey, please, yes, I'll sit and, uh, down for an R.T. Miller press conference. It doesn't matter. I mean, just uh, think about it. When when IU's campus opens back up and <laughs> and the guys are allowed to work out, I mean, people are going to be covering summer workouts. People li- like us, for example, are going to be covering summer workouts like it's the first time we've ever seen the thing. Like it, it's just going to be, it's going to be over covered by the, from that standpoint. But I think everybody will be interested in watching it. Oh yeah. You talk about press coverage. It's, it's whatever. It's like yeah. uh so, checkers, checkers tournament. Four or five cameras will be there. You're right. Who knows what, how that's going to be, but it's good. And I wonder how it's going to affect the product that we're going to see, whether it's college football, basketball, it doesn't matter. I mean, cause not getting in shape and, 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 you know, there's a lot said about, you know, getting on a roll and getting on a rhythm and teams get on that rhythm. And then a lot of times you'll see a following season teams coming off of a great year. Well, all of that has been kind of chopped. Uh, and it's it start everybody is starting from scratch almost from the same place. 
Yeah, I don't really see that being too big of an issue. As, you know, let's use college football as an example right now. I mean, yeah, they missed spring spring practices and, and scrimmages and things like that. I get it. it. It'll have a little bit of an effect, but probably only at the very beginning of the season, if at all. I mean, I don't know that we'll really even notice it. Um, you know, if you start getting into the point where they're not allowed, you know, and they're not allowed to come back on campus until, you know, late August um, and not allowed on campus at all. So they're not allowed to do any summer workouts or any of that stuff. Yeah. Then, then all of a sudden I think we'll see a little bit of slip and decline in play to start the season out. But once they get in a couple of games, you know, it does not take, 20 year old kids very long to get back into shape and, and to get into game shape. So it, it won't, it won't be that big of a factor as long as it, you know, within a reasonable time frame, they're able to get back on campus. Of the guys coming in for uh, Indiana basketball, you've got Anthony Leo and Trey Galloway, uh, Christian Lander and Logan Duncan. Uh, um, I know you've seen three of those guys, at least a lot, um, uh, seeing their play. What are the eats individually? What are those guys bringing to this team and who can, who, who do you think has the best chance of, of contributing the most immediately? I mean, I'm thinking that's going to be Lander. Yeah, I mean, Lander Lander is probably um, – his. he's probably more position-specific than anyone else, um, but he's also coming into a position that was fairly locked up. I mean, I think Rob Finnessy, as long as he was healthy – was the starting point guard, you know, throughout the season, and I don't, I don't see that as – you know, a, a change other than the fact of um, I can definitely see Indiana playing with multiple guards and I can see Christian Lander coming in and and easily working his way onto the court. I, I think whoever is able to acclimate themselves physically uh, will probably get the most playing time to start. And, and I haven't seen Jordan Geronimo play in person. And I've seen some game films, but I don't like to you know you never know the competition level where he's from or who he's playing against if I watched him playing some AAU things I think I would feel a little bit better about the position of him coming in but I I I think Anthony Leal and Trey Galloway uh for sure will will vie for a significant amount of playing time I mean I think that those guys will get on the court um I I I think Christian Lander will for sure get on the court I I just um you know, it's it's just so hard to say. It's hard to say what the team makeup is going to be because, you know, Christian Lander coming in, it's going to be really difficult to not play him. <laughs> I mean, he is he's fast. He's everything that Archie Miller has said he wanted this team to be. And then those guys coming in, I, I, I'll tell you, the guys who, who really are going to have to improve and step up are going to be Armand Franklin and Jerome Hunter. Those two guys are going to have to improve their level of play, or these guys coming in are going to take their spots and take their minutes right away. Exactly. I mean, and you got guys like Leo and Galloway. We know that they're solid, heady players. Lander, I, I think that he is, and Geronimo, we know the least about, uh, just because of, of he plays so far away. But and Lander, I think he is the, the true X factor. I, I think that he can actually come in and push. And, and do what hasn't been done before. Push Rob Finnessy to get better. Both those guys pushing each other. The tempo immediately just goes up, and that elevates the team in and of itself. But I, I think I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do on this team, and I think that he can come in and have an impact. I think the biggest thing for Christian Lander is going to be finding that right speed, man. He's going to want it because he's going to want to go, 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 go. But we've also seen him play both of us in a game where he didn't go enough. And so you got to find that sweet spot to where you're being aggressive enough, but you're not, and you're not sitting back too much that you're involving everybody, but you're also involved yourself because he's a dangerous offensive threat. Yeah. I mean, the, the films and stuff I've seen of him in AAU are a different player than what I saw of him and uh, on his team at Evansville. And, and, you know, that's, that's just a factor of high school basketball rules versus AAU. And, um, and, and and what he is in AAU is much more, I think, of what we'll see at, at IU. But you know, he, he's he's a guy. You're right. I mean, he's he's a guy we will be interested in seeing from day one. Um, you know how quickly he gets acclimated because he, he's just looking at his skill set. I mean, he looks like a guy who could impact the team right off the bat. Uh, you know, a, a guy who I'm really interested in seeing 
the development of, and this is why I hope the campuses get opened back up for the summertime is Jerome Hunter, because, you know, last year, I know last year he kind of was cleared to play, but, you know, he doesn't really know the expectation level because he's not a hundred percent sure, you know, how his legs are going to be or how, you know, how he's going to react body wise and just doesn't know really what to expect. He hadn't had any game action. Um, this year, you know, he's been involved in games. He knows what it's like. He, he's confident in his ability to stay healthy. And, and you really look for a guy like him to have kind of a breakout season. And, and last year, um, you know, last year, I think he was always throughout the entire season trying to still feel his way through the process. And I think now he knows the process and can work at specific things and not have to think about being injured or his body not reacting properly and, and things like that. And so I, I think this could be a, a significant year for Jerome Hunter to make a bigger impact on the team. It's funny you say that because, you know, in, in trying to find things to do during this, this weird time, you know, we're watching everything. Uh, but watching the, the last dance of Michael Jordan uh, and a couple other things, but I saw one thing that was real consistent in that. I kept hearing guys – talking about how this guy improved so much between his freshman and his sophomore year. Yeah. And, 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 and it was Michael Jordan. It was a different guy. It was uh, 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 Scotty Pippen, I think. It was just all these different guys. And that difference between that particular and, – and really, this is his freshman and sophomore year because his freshman right. year was, like, taken away. So that was his freshman year. So it plays right into exactly what you're saying. The, this, and then, but then you got this weird offseason – that's going to impact that yep. he can't do what he would normally do. And is that a guy, is this going to impact him more than anybody else? And I think that it's possible. Yeah, you would think so. I mean, just looking at it on paper, I, I think it kind of lends itself to think that, I mean, you know, he's not getting to do the individual workouts and, and right now there's really not a big difference other than, than, you know, once the summertime gets here, that's when it'll really start impacting negatively the fact that they they can't be on campus and work out with the trainers and the coaches and that stuff because that's when you know you really can go one-on-one -on -one and, and get a lot of good workouts in they're still they would still be in school right now they would be doing workouts but not to the level and extent that they will once school once summertime gets here and and you know we still got some time before that happens and and you know hopefully if they can just get to the point where the campuses are opened up um, where he's allowed to go in and, and do workouts with the coaches and, and use the facilities, you know, I, then I think everyone involved will be okay. It, you, you mentioned it earlier. I mean, all of the guys coming in, um, Leo Galloway, Geronimo, and I'm, and I'm sure Lander, all of those guys um, plan on being there, you know, right at the beginning of June, right, right when school's out. And they will be the ones that will have setbacks, I think, as much as anyone when it comes to to how they're able to transition over the summertime and get their bodies in a position, you know, to, to add five or 10 pounds because that beating in the, in the big 10 is, it, it's not just, it's not just hearsay. It's not just people, you know, making stuff up like your body takes a beating. And when you only weigh 165 pounds, I mean, it's, it hurts. Well, and Trey Jackson Davis is someone I've just left. We've left off this list. He was a freshman too. He played so well, we forgot about that. But he, he's also someone that is looking for that big improvement step. Going to be impacted. There's no way that he's his development is not going to be impacted by the lack of going on. There's no development happening, so that development obviously going to be slowed. Uh, I, he's not one that's going to be affected as much because he had a really successful season. But again, when you don't have all the resources that he normally would have had this summer, it's got to affect his development in somewhat, I would imagine. Well, when you look at Trace Jackson Davis, from my opinion, um, you know, he has the biggest hurdle to get over from an improvement standpoint of anyone on the team because he was really good at all the things he was really good at. I mean, offensive rebounding, being strong with the ball. I mean, he was as strong with the ball as any freshman I can remember in, in a long, long, long time. And so all of that, he's, you know, he just has to continue that, continue to get, you know, a little bit stronger and maybe add a little bit more weight and, and, you know, continue running the floor, stay in shape and all that stuff. All of those things are just him maybe tweaking and getting a little bit stronger, a little bit better at the things he's already good at. But, but the thing he's got to do in order to be next level ready 
is he's got to come up with a 17 or a you know 15 to 17 foot outside jump shot that's consistent and and he's confident in and that's not the easiest thing to do you know that is that's adding something brand new to your game um i mean i think the kid only took two 17 foot jump shots the entire season and that's because the shot clock was running down so we're talking about him having to completely add something to his game and that's where this type of situation i have no idea what he may have his own gym at home and he may have a personal trainer that he works out with every day. I'm not sure. But I mean, him dealing with, um, you know, shooting the basketball at a consistent pace, that takes his game to a whole nother level. That's where I say, I truly think there's a possibility Trace Jackson Davis plays at IU for three years. Because if he doesn't have the improvement this year on that mid range jump shot or any kind of outside jump shot, um, you know, his transition to the NBA is not going to be near as smooth as as what he what it could be yeah well, uh well, when we come back chronic hoosier is going to join us that's one of the things too to talk about is is will this COVID 19 abbreviated uh, uh off season will it help trace jackson davis to come back because of not getting that that development of where he wants to be because he's not someone that has to go pro you know he's uh, his situation is, is such where he, he can wait until he develops. And he's got a father who played in the league and who's probably going to direct him the best way for him. But uh, we got lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat. We're coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by rivals. If you're hungry, make sure you reach out to uh, EaglePointPub.com. They got all kinds of uh, specials. They even got uh, steaks and hamburgers and eggs and all kinds of stuff to sell, man. So reach out to them. But uh, Chronic Hoosier coming up next here on Indiana Sports Beat with Cornell Larry. Back with more Powered by Rivals right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs. Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. 
Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, this is Jordan Hall, former Indiana Hoosier. Keep up with Indiana Sports on Indiana Sports Beat. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Royal Larry coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by rivals here on this Tuesday. You know what that means. Joined now by the de facto leader of Hoosier Nation, Chronic Hoosier. How are you, sir? Oh man, you need to you need to check your facts. I don't know who put that one out there. I'm uh, I'm doing well, man. Glad to be back. <laughs> uh, just uh, we're, we're trying to have fun in, in any way, shape, or form right now, man. Uh, hey, uh, you're one of the few people we haven't talked to. Uh, had the uh, the Michael Jordan last dance got started. Did you get a chance to check that out? I did, man. Talk about a walk through memory lane. That was uh, that was cool to see. I'm glad they pushed that forward a little bit just to give us some distraction. You know, something to uh, take our mind off everything. But it was a uh, it was a good time. I've, I uh, I tweeted out a picture. I as a kid. I used to be a an avid, avid Michael Jordan fan. Collected everything in the world. Uh, we had a, a Sports Illustrated subscription. I made my dad bring the copies back from the office. That way, if there were sick pictures on both sides of the page, I could cut them out and slap them up. But it uh, gave me a chance to break out some of my old stuff. I showed my kids about 30 of my 77 Jordan posters before they uh, they kind of grew tired of my, uh, my, my, my obsession, I guess. Yeah, well, he's uh, he, he prompted a, an obsession by a lot of people in the past. But, uh, yeah, fun watching that stuff. And earlier we were just talking uh, about the next year's Indiana team, Chronic, and you got to some great kids coming in, a lot of, a lot of local flavor. You got Anthony Leo and you got Trey Galloway and then down uh, Christian Lander, most likely from Evansville, and, of course, Geronimo coming from the Northeast. But uh, a, a great infusion of, of talent, of Indiana talent, and uh, I think it's just a, a roster that's getting closer to what a lot of Hoosier fans like to see. No, for sure. And, you know, there was some movement on that front last week with uh, the NCAA basically waiving the standardized testing requirements. Uh, it's going to open the door for kids like Christian Lander, um, who are trying to make up some ground here in a hurry as the school year draws to a close and summer session starts. Uh, it's just one less obstacle to get them onto campus right now. So, you know, credit to the NCAA for making some concessions. Uh, but hopefully Indiana will be the beneficiary of that decision. Uh, allowing that point guard to get himself to Bloomington a little bit sooner. Yeah, looking forward to that. And then something else I saw yesterday, and, and Todd, we haven't talked about this yet either, but I noticed that the NBA is looking at potentially using the Mamba Academy uh, to kind of develop this elite team of the G League team, uh, the Isaiah Todds and uh, uh, those types that are going out there. And, of course, A.J. Moye from Hoosier is out there involved in that there. So uh, it's just a different way. That's kind of a weird to, to, out, to involve an outside agency in the, the development of a league. Yeah, you know, I was I was given that a lot of thought and I was trying to read as much as I could about, you know, the the real benefits to the quote G League, but we really know it's the NBA overall. And <laughs> and for the life of me, I cannot figure out what the benefits are to to the G League or the NBA for the for what they're doing for these guys coming in here. I just I can't I mean, they're not going to be a real they're not going to be on a real G League team. They're basically just going to train and play some exhibition games throughout the season. So I really cannot figure out for the life of me what what the benefit to the NBA is. You got any feeling on that, Chronic? You know, I, I, I think for for decades, um, almost since its inception, honestly, the NBA has gotten away without having to fully invest in a developmental league. Uh, you look across the globe at professional sports and they recognize that talent is their greatest asset and they have to invest in that talent development. You, know, you can look at the baseball model, the hockey model, uh, soccer worldwide, you know, with the, uh, the the academies that all the professional teams sponsor. It's a way for them to identify, to develop uh, talent that ultimately, you know, populates their, their professional ranks. And 
you know, perhaps nobody's worse than the NBA, say for the NFL, as far as having to actually invest in that. And the G League was always supposedly their their half hearted attempt at at having that developmental league. But I think what you see now is 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 they've they've kind of carved out this elite path for these guys. It's it's honestly just I don't know that it's lip service because you know don't get me wrong half million dollar contract is a lot of cheddar. Um, it, it allows them to to basically latch into these guys to lock them in. I'm not sure exactly if they're going to do like a homegrown type uh, setup like soccer does, where when you invest in the kid from the get go, you have first dibs on them uh, when they become draft eligible or whatnot. But basically, it looks like they're simply just trying to siphon off uh, the the very cream of the crop in the upcoming uh, high schoolers. And, and get them, you know, basically get their hands on them. Um, you know, as I, I've been thinking about it this week as well and, and looking at what the practical effect is, you know, you're going to see a handful of kids uh, who, who decide to take that route. And it's, it's certainly an option that's been available to them in other avenues. Uh, but those usually required, you know, going overseas uh, into a country where you don't necessarily speak the language and you don't have any contacts. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's an environment that's devoid of a lot of trust for sending an 18-year-old kid. You know, give or take a year, uh, who's just starting out as a professional. So it, it certainly provides an alternative to that. But at the end of the day, you know, who's who's going to really stand to be, you know, to, to be impacted the most? You're probably looking at the Dukes, the Kentuckys, you know, perhaps the Kansas here and there, Arizona. Um, you know, if that's the route these kids choose to take, it's certainly it's it's certainly one of the safer options uh, as far as how you go turn professional at that age or at that stage of your development. Uh, I. I for me, I've been looking at all the the hyperbole talking about how, you know, the NBA is coming for the NCAA. No, they're not. They're still not spending any meaningful money on developing the talent. They're still not organizing a league that I, I, I don't see, at least as it stands now, is going to be that terribly attractive or that even available to a vast number of kids where they're going to forego college. I mean, they've, they've had this option available for a while if they wanted to go play overseas um it's just it's it's had a lot more risks and while that may mitigate some of the risk for a small number of the kids um I, I still don't see it as being monumental as a lot of the commentators and pundits are making it out to be right now the, the one thing i don't get is as we get really close to just doing away with the one and done rule it's the nba's rule that they have to change but as we get close because i think we're probably a year away from that maybe or possibly two that's going to take care of that. So this is completely unnecessary. This is like, uh, let me do this until we get to that. And if that's fine, if that's the case, then that's fine. Because I, I personally think it's going to make college basketball better because it's going to take out some of those players, but it's just going to take out a select few. And it's going to put a, a more even keel out there, I think, of, of players, which would make the game even better. And it was pretty damn good last year. Yeah, I mean, if you took if you took last year's, you know, top, let's say top 10 or top 25 players that were rated nationally, coming out. I mean, it would have had a very minimal effect on college basketball. I mean, it would have, it would have affected Duke with, with, uh, Kerry not being available, but for the most part, it really wouldn't have had that big of an impact based on the guys who, who you look at were ranked so highly. No, cause you're looking at Memphis and offers. Georgia, the teams yeah. that didn't do anything. Well, and why, and Wiseman, I mean, most of those teams who had a guy on there, like Wiseman from Memphis and, and, uh, Edwards from Georgia, those, they weren't going to make the tournament anyway. So it, it really was going to have a minimal impact on college basketball from a quality standpoint. And, and I just um, I, I think that I think what you're saying with the one and done rule being done. I mean, I don't know if they're using this as kind of a trial period to see if uh, if this may be the way they go with the new collective bargaining agreement. And this is what they put in place, because here's here's what you can Here's what they say all the time is you'll hear the players say, hey, it's not fair. You can't we should be able to come straight out of high school and all that. But let's be for real. The guys who are veterans in the league, they don't really want the one and done rule to go away. They're taking a veteran. You're taking a risk on a high school kid that's 18 years old and paying him a bunch of money. And you're taking a roster spot from a guy from a veteran who's not going to be able to play anymore. And so once they're past that first year, I can assure you, those veteran players, the ones that I know and have talked to, they don't want the one and one done rule to go away because it's taken a roster spot from a guy who it's his livelihood and and it may be his one extra year that he gets to play. It's going to be taken up by an 18-year-old kid now. Yeah, well, it's well, coming. It's too late. <laughs> I, I did see last week, and I can't remember exactly where the reporting, but I saw a couple of sources where the one and done um, topic had actually become a sticking point in the, in the, the CBA 
uh, negotiations right now because as the NBA offered to do away with that, they put a rider on that or they made that contingent or at least put a poison pill in there where the players would have to uh, make all of their health data available to the teams. And the, um, the Players Association absolutely was not having that. So I, I kind of wondered if this, um, this new elite path that they've created wasn't basically a bridge to get them from now to whenever that issue gets resolved because there were some talks that the, uh, the, the push to end the one-and-done rule has stalled out based on that, uh, that, that sticking point about health data. And, and and I truly like that. That was the first thing that came to mind because I couldn't figure out the NBA's benefit to what they're doing with this, other than a way to say to the players when they do when that collective bargaining conversation does come back up and it is a sticking point for them to say, hey, how about this solution? You know, this is what we've done for the last two seasons, and look at how well it's worked out. We've not taken a roster spot from somebody yet; these players are able to you know transition to a training where they're getting paid and. You know, we're, they think they're putting a better product for this kid one year down the road because he's able to train in an NBA perspective as opposed to a college basketball. And and then I think it's the NBA's version is the only way I can see a positive for them of them going back for the collective bargaining and, and this being the way of them saying this is what we want to do as opposed to having these guys jump straight from high school to a team roster. Well, well and chronic- at the end of the day, all they want is the uh- – the least amount of risk possible when they're assessing and selecting talent. And for years, they've gotten away with that. They've been able to watch the colleges spend money to house the kids, to put them through school, to put them through the workouts, to, you know, to run the games and organize the leagues. And they could, you know, they could do all of their assessment basically for free. And the G League has always been a way for, you know, the more experienced players who are kind of on the fringe of making the league or not to keep them close and to see if maybe they've, you know, they've made that leap or gotten over the hump where they were ready for the, the big show. And uh, all the while, they, they've done this, and, and I think you have to keep in mind this is a business. Every step they make is to minimize their cost and to maximize their benefit in the whole arrangement. And that's that's where the one-and-done rule came from the beginning. That's that's where the failure to develop the G League into really a viable minor league is coming. I mean, you look at baseball, um, you know, there are multiple leagues all over the country uh, that are actually profit-generating. Uh, you know, they, they are, they're big parts of the communities where they reside. And that's, that's currently being threatened right now as well. But nevertheless, um, you know, they've had these systems in place that allowed them to, to assess the talent, to develop them, but also to make some money out of it. And the NBA just hasn't quite figured out, uh, how to get there. And they continue to fumble their way towards that, honestly. I agree with you, Chronic. Another thing I've been thinking about, and, and, and you're probably someone who I thought about asking, obviously, for this question, is the effects of, of this COVID-19 fallout on college towns. Because you see what's going on. You see and it's every town, but college towns especially, they're so, uh, they re- rely on, on these students, and, well, they're gone. And so uh, the bulk of the town is just gone. So not only ha- do we have you know, the COVID fallout of people having to stay home. There's so many people that are just not even here to help support a lot of these businesses. I mean, you've got just, when you consider the numbers uh, locally, how this thing's impacting Bloomington, we've got a, uh, a combined graduate and undergraduate student population of about 55,000 students. Um, you know, the university employs somewhere, I think 17 to 20 some odd thousand employees. Uh, this is a town. Bloomington itself is a town of 80, 90,000 people, permanent residents, uh, at least within the city limits. So when you take the number of students out, uh, that's it's tremendous. You take the number of employees out. You, while everybody's, you know, McRobbie has kept everybody on the payroll, at least through the, uh, the end of the fiscal year, at the end of June right now, those employees aren't coming to campus anymore. You know, and, and while a lot of them do live here, keep in mind that IU is not only the largest employer in Monroe County, but I believe every county that touches it. Uh, there's a lot of people that come from all parts of Southern Indiana uh, who, who bring their money here. You know, they, they, they eat here. They, they buy things when they're in town. And it's been, it's been staggering what the, uh, what the sudden impact has been on, on the economy locally. Um, just, just basically by the stroke of a pen. You know, and I'm I'm still extremely thankful that they took the action that they did when they did. Um, you want to talk about a super spreader event. I, I don't know exactly how many of the, the students travel for spring break, but it's a lot. And even if they're just going, you know, back home and not traveling, you know, domestically or internationally, 
it posed the risk of bringing a lot of infected people back to town and putting them in real close quarters uh, and just making a whole mess. So while it was uh, it was certainly a, a very wise and prudent decision to make, uh, and you saw it echoed across the country in the way in which campuses responded, uh, it's also, you don't want to talk about throwing the e-brakes on an economy, uh, you're going to be hard-pressed across the country to find a town that was more suddenly and more... Um, more completely affected than Bloomington has been so far. And it's, it's really exposed a lot of the, uh, a lot of the issues with the local economy. So much of Bloomington has become a, a hospitality driven, uh, industry. And even if you're not in hospitality, I mean, you're only a couple degrees removed from, from those dollars. So it's been, um, it, it's, it's been a really startling time here to say the least. I mean, we're, we're still not sure what exactly is going to happen here in the next month and the next six months. Um, you know, there's a, a very vigorous debate taking place right now about how you can get students back on campus and what has to happen before um, that decision can be responsibly made. And unfortunately, I, I don't think we're anywhere close to that at the moment, um, simply because we, we haven't contained this, this virus, because we haven't, we haven't ramped up the testing so we can identify who has it, who's already survived it, who's built the antibodies up. So I know there's a lot of really, really, really smart people that are working on these problems right now in collaboration with smart people all over the country, all over the globe. Um, but it's we're not there yet, and I don't know that we're going to be there anytime soon. So uh, we've got some time still uh, before they have to make that decision. Um, but as we learned last week, you know, you're probably not going to see college athletics return until you see college students back on campus. So we're going to remain in limbo for the time being. Uh, you know, for the time being, we're still kind of being propped up by those university dollars. Um, you know, I, at least locally, I've seen in my own business, you know, the last couple of weeks, have, I've seen a little bit of an easing uh, as far as people getting back out and some commerce being done. But, you know, it's, it's still very fragile right now and so uncertain that, you know, best we can do is try to make the most of every day, keep our fingers crossed, and um, keep trying to take care of each other as we, as we navigate our way through this thing, man. I hear you, brother. Chronic Hoosier, appreciate you as always, man. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. We'll catch you later. You See bet. You there he is, uh, Chronic Hoosier, joining us here on the Indiana Sports Beat with Coyne O'Leary. We got a lot more coming up here. Uh, Eric Gordon is going to join us next here on the program, former Hoosier, now Houston Rockets. Stay tuned. We're back with him right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red-eye U-hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Club and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. 
This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coy O'Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, it's Michael Lewis, former Indiana University player and current UCLA assistant basketball coach, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Larry coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by our rivals. Make sure you go to the Hoosier.com, get for complete coverage of the Indiana Hoosiers. Joined now by former Hoosier great at Houston Rocket, Eric Gordon. Eric, how are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, man. It's been a it's a weird time for all of us, but especially for somebody who who would be not just working, but uh, working in a manner in professional basketball. You guys had your season just cut in half, and what a great season it was looking to be for you all. Well, yeah, well, you know, we're a championship caliber team, and, uh, you know, it's reluctant that we couldn't finish it. So, you know, hopefully we're, we're able to resume here and, uh, you know, find out who, who can be the champion this year. Your, your dad's on with us quite a bit. You guys, you have your great academy that, that allows you to keep continuing to reach back and help these kids in Indiana. And how special is that to you to be able to continue to do that? Yeah, it is special. You know, my dad, he's put, you know, me and my brothers in the best situation possible. And um, and it's worked out well for all of us. All of us have been college a- athletes and play on many different levels. And, um, and uh, so... To, to have that for other kids, uh, the, you know, to have them to reach their dreams and for them to be successful. My dad, he, he knows, he knows, uh, on various levels. And, and you know, and, and to do it as a family, that's gotta be special because we see academies all over the place, but this is a complete family kind of organization. Yeah, for sure. You know, my dad, he's been doing it for a, a little while now. How I many times flies and he's been doing it for a while and, uh, and he's going to keep doing it because, you know, he, 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 he mainly, um stays on the you know when you stay on the doing the basics in basketball it, it, it's it keeps going a long way because uh this game don't change much it's it's all about shooting you know having a complete game and uh you don't have to have be the best athlete but you, you still got to work on the basics and that's what he does and, and you still use those things as i'm in my 12th year in the nba so uh, he definitely knows and when you're able to to get home and participate in that, what's it like for you to be able to to give back in that that situation? Well, it's fun, you know. Uh, each I always because uh, you know I'm here in Houston a lot during the season, and uh, whenever I do get a chance to go back, and it's it's always fun and to see kids develop. I always see I've seen kids since my dad's been doing this for like twelve around twelve years or so now. I've seen kids from when they were really young until they're almost now uh, going into college. So it's, it's been a good transition to see. And, and you know, I mentioned being in Houston. Ironically, your your old college coach, Kelvin Sampson, is in Houston. It's weird that he's there at the same time as you, but uh, that's got to be kind of a, a, a unique situation. Well, yeah, you know, this is a great time. Me and him stay close, and I still – I'm still – I am close with him today, he, you know. Um I I don't think he got the really the the right uh, love and recognition at IU, even though he did well in, in those two years while he was there. But he's still a great coach. He went to Houston. Everywhere he's been, he's taken teams far further than what they've uh, what they've expected. So, uh, but uh, you know, I I enjoyed playing for him. Yeah, they had a great run. They they're they're doing it pretty well. Are you able to keep up with any of your former teammates? I know you stay busy with the the, the academy and of course playing ball and all that. But uh, what are you able to do in that regard? 
You said keep up both. Uh, oh, former, with the Rockets. Yeah, or you know, your former IU teammates. Well, yeah, you know, I've seen uh, I've seen Jordan Crawford. Uh, of course, uh, I've heard from uh, Lance Stimler and and also uh, DJ White. Uh, yeah, so I keep up with some of those guys, and uh, you know. You know, it's crazy. It's been over 10 years now. But, uh, yeah, I still, you know, hear hear from those guys every once in a while and, uh, and you know, still connect every, every, every once in a while. And, and you just mentioned it's been 10 years. I mean, think about that. I mean, I'm sure you can look back, and we were just talking about the academy. I'm sure you can think about when you were that age, but not – you've already been through IU, and you've been in the NBA for a decade. That, that's got to be mind-boggling. Yeah, it moves it moves by fast, you know. And I'm yeah, into my twelfth year, it, it definitely goes by fast. But uh, but I, I've gained a lot of, a lot of knowledge about the game, and uh, I'm still passionate about about the game. Even you know, probably even more now because you got to as you get older, you got to work on your body and do more things. And uh, so I still love the game like I did when I was a kid. Well, I don't know how many teams there are, even in the in the NBA, that uh, where uh, let's say, well, I think it was Russell Westbrook and James Harden were out, and you st- and you knocked down fifty points. I mean, that's not just an everyday occurrence for anyone uh, in the NBA. What a, that had to be a special night for you. Yeah, it was a special night. You know, uh, I just wanted to for sure let people know that I could still put the ball in the basket, do things my own way, and uh, you know. And still help the team, you know, still win games, even uh, even when your other teammates are, are are out. So I just wanted to continue to, you know, still showcase myself, but but at the same time, still help the team win. Now, are you able to follow Indiana at all? I know, like I said, I know you're busy during the season and all that. But uh, how much of the college game do you get to watch? Oh, I watch I watch a lot of games. I would say probably seventy eighty percent of all their games. Really. Yeah. How, how you, what do you think about where they're going? They got a lot of local kids coming in the next year. You got Anthony Leo and Trey Galloway uh, coming, and Christian Lander, all all Indiana kids. So a lot of Indiana kids on this roster. Yeah, that's good. That's the key to it. I always tell people that's the key. When you get some of the top ball players in Indiana, you're gonna, you're going to give yourself a chance. Um, um, you know, because kids from Indiana, they're they're just more naturally skilled, and they fit like the Big Ten system and. You got more well-rounded players in the Midwest period, but, um, but yeah, you know, I, I like how the team's doing, especially, uh, you know, they're making, they're hitting strides. They, you know, we, we got to get to the point where, um, you know, the, the, the consistency of winning at home and on the road, you know, I always see them win at home, but they always, when they always struggle on the road and, um, but you can tell that there's, you know, good chemistry with the coach though. Now, I know that's hard for you to get back to a game, but uh, any plans for that in, in the next season to get back to IU for any of their games? You know what I wish, man? I, I really wish I can get to a game. Our season is, you know, is our seasons are parallel with each other, so it's really hard to it's really hard to to get to a game. I wish I could, you know, but uh, but I am opening up a business down uh, pizza uh, business in. Bloomington here soon. Uh, it's called Greek's Pizzeria, so that'll, that'll for sure force me to get down there a lot more. What's the name of it? Greek's Pizzeria. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Greek's Pizzeria is opening up, owned by Eric Gordon. Where's it going to be, Eric? Right across the – literally, you can miss it right across the street from the football stadium in those new uh, apartments. Oh yeah, know exactly where you are. All right, so well, yeah. can't I can't wait to uh, we'll have us some Greeks pizzeria. So when's it going to open? Well, we're all, we'll open before school starts next next summer. Awesome. Uh, any uh, why a pizzeria is, is pizza something that you have an affinity for? Or is it just a, an opportunity? Um, both. I've always loved pizza, and and, uh, <laughs> and I thought it'd be a good opportunity in Bloomington. You know, Bloomington already has a lot of your other pizza places. And uh, and I was like, man, why can't I just, you know, I want to definitely have a staple down there in Bloomington for sure. Larry's going to be mad. He had to leave uh, to go do, 
to a doctor's appointment today. But uh, so we, any special pizza names you got? The, the Aaron Gordon, of course, or the three pointer, or uh, well, you, got some, <laughs> you got to come up with some good names here, man. The deep. Oh dish. yeah, for sure. I, I have a special pizza, but hey, you just gave me a good idea right there. That's a good. That was a good one. That was a good I like idea. That one. I like that one. Hey, well, we've got to have an Indiana sports beat pizza or something. we got to figure out something, man. we got to get on there. We'll help you out. But, yeah, that's an incredible. I think you should have great, just all kinds of great pizza names. You can name them different oh, yeah. names for whatever. That will be cool. So yeah, are you, so the definitely. the decor, is it, what's the is it inside? Is it going to be decorated with IU memorabilia or is it just going to be a typical pizza place? No, no, it's going to be decorative memorabilia. You know, I def, you definitely need the IU stuff in there. you got to make it more feel at home and uh, – um, you know, bring out the history of uh, uh, almost all sports in uh, in Indiana. Now, and Greeks Pizzeria. Why, why the word? What, what is it? A chain or what's the word? Where's the no, name no, come it's from? Franchise. Yeah, it's a franchise. Franchise. I gotcha. As I said, we should call this the EG10 Greeks Pizzeria. Man, <laughs> throw that throw that personal name no, on there. No, it is. No, it is. It, it it is. It will be. I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, any kind of specialty pizzas that they have? Do they specialize in anything? The reason why I like them because all their all their uh, different kinds of pizzas are, are very are very good and very unique. And uh, I just, you know, I was like, man, let me get on board and, uh, um, you know, start branching this out to other places. You know, maybe Houston one day, and uh, but definitely in Indiana first. Or you could get with other former Indiana players and wherever they are in their NBA cities or wherever, and they could put a franchise in each of those cities. Right, right. I definitely had an idea. That, that's our idea. Maybe in their college cities is what I was thinking of. So you never know. We, we're going we're gonna to see what, how, how this goes and, and branch out even more. We're going to hash this out right here, Harry. <laughs> we're going to get this thing back <laughs> up, man. It's like, this is perfect. But yeah, it's exciting. That's exciting to hear. Looking forward to that. But uh, uh, what else? How are you? Do, what else are you doing to spend this time? I know it's such a weird time. You can't. Are you able to work out at all? I know it, it, it's so hard for people to find places, uh, even for professionals. I saw we saw yesterday where Tom Brady was uh, asked to leave a park in Tampa Bay because the park is closed. Yeah, well, our parks aren't aren't closed, but uh, I still I still work out, doing a little bit of running, more more of that kind of sort. But um, you know, because when basketball season starts, I I should be in a I should be in decent shape by the time that when whenever they announce that that gets going. I think that one of the few things that we've we've kept hope out in is the NBA of, of trying to come back and do something this year. What what are your thoughts right now? Any you still have some hope that that could happen? Yeah, I hope so. And I, I still do have some hope, you know, uh, you know, I'll get worried if they don't have no decision by mid May or something, if they don't have no decision by then, and that's going to be, it's going to be uh worry, troublesome for us. So we'll, we'll see what happens though. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it, uh, Eric, and I, I cannot thank you enough for uh, taking the time to join us uh, as uh, you spend this time trying to stay in shape and get ready for whatever season comes around and for uh, Greek's Pizzeria that's coming next fall, man. We're looking forward to that as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, appreciate it for having me, man. Sure. Well, we'll do it again, Eric. We'll keep up with you and uh, we'll check in. But uh, thank you so much for joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat. We really appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Eric Gordon, uh, former Hoosier great, uh, now with the Houston Rockets, and a pizzeria, a Grease Pizzeria owner joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat. Uh, can't thank him enough, uh, as always. We'll uh, look keep up with him and catch up with him uh, as we go along. But uh, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for us on the program today. Uh, looking forward to it. Thanks a lot to uh, Chronic Hoosier for joining us. And, of course, the great one, Eric Gordon. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with plenty more, as always. Make sure you go to thehoosier.com and get yourself signed up for complete coverage by the Indiana Hoosiers. Uh, get yourself some takeout from uh, Bubba's or uh, even Point, wherever you need to. Until tomorrow, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio.